Good morning and welcome back to another beautiful day out here in Colorado. I want to take you on a bit of a plant walk, show you my garden. This is kind of what I do pretty much every day. Now that it's spring, spring has sprung. I walk around, I say hi to all my plant babies. And I just want to talk about gardening specifically, um, I mean anywhere, but specifically kind of in a more mountainous area. As you can see, we live up on my, my friend's house, two acres. It just goes up and up and up and up and up. And it's beautiful, but it's also desertous and it's fairly barren. And when I first got here, I had no idea how to work in the soil. I came, I was living in Denver and I had a quarter acre on a flat ground, like in a neighborhood and the soil was bad. So I learned about soil regeneration, but it was very simple and I could have a watering system here. It's just we're kind of out in the wild. We're up an animal sanctuary. There's deer, there's bears, there's mountain lions. Oh my. And what I've been doing is I've been, I apprenticeshiped at a local nursery. I've been following as much research, talking to people, learning as much as I can. But at the end of the day, when I come out here, I just do what feels right based on my intuition. Um, it's kind of like cooking, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have, uh, this is how you do it and there's recipes, but your kitchen's different, your ingredients are different, your location, all, there's a million different factors. And if you're just following someone, you're not necessarily gonna capture what it's like to really be present and listen because nature is really my teacher. That's where I learn everything. So we built this path you can kind of see up here and um, I started looking around the property. The first thing was getting really a sense of what the property was like with certain areas um, that, you know, maybe had better soil. And so I was looking under trees and we found this deciduous tree here. This is actually a hackberry tree. Um, and this tree um, is nice because it drops its leaves. So check out this first garden bed that I built last year. So kind of put rocks around it. I've amended the soil with compost. I put some uh, mulch on top and then also last year I really cover crop this area which basically means you're taking different seeds that are uh, nitrogen fixers and that are going to cover this whole area so that the soil gets to regenerate over time so even if you're not eating a lot of that stuff peas and things and clovers as it comes up you build a lot of foliage and then when it um, dies back you know you end up with much better soil this soil is way better than it was last year and look I have thyme it's coming back all these perennials I'm definitely growing um, annuals, but really the focus here is perennials because I don't want to have to be planting all the time, you know? So after a few years, it's just going to take care of itself. Comfrey, this is one of the best plants to have, they say in the permaculture world. Um, great fertilizer. You can just rip the leaves off and basically throw them down or make a tea out of that to fertilize. Mint, people get worried about mint because they say it takes over. But dear friend, Veronica Flores from Flavor Kit, what she says is she says, you know, you can weed mint out and every time you pull out the weeds you know technically whenever you pull out the mint you get fresh mint so it's easier for me to plant it and let it take over and just kind of pull it out than to try to plant a lot of mint um so i thought it was a cool perspective because it's not it's not really going to take over when you have other plants but it will spread so just be aware of that and you can control it um so there's some peas there they're great nitrogen fixers lemon balm is coming back i planted some different flowers to attract bees there's some oregano in there and then what I do is I, with the cover cropping, now I'll make these different seed blends. I'll take radish and I'll take kales and different greens and peas and things like that. And what I like to do is just kind of sprinkle them all over. I'm not really worried about putting specific beds here. It's another note about Colorado is most of the people around here, what you'll see is they'll, you know, they'll make a square bed um, or they'll have like an area where their garden, they fence it in. And of course, if you want to protect from animals, um, that's definitely the way to go, and I totally get that. But for me, I recognize that this is not my land. This is the land of the animals. So the deer come through here, about 20 deer every day, and they just graze. And listen, they're gonna eat what they're gonna eat. And I'm not planting just for me, I'm planting for nature. You know, I just love the process of planting, and I know if I plant enough, there'll be abundance for everyone. So that's just something that I've kind of come to, to just feel very closely with, and my roommate loves deer. We joke that he's a deer. Um, and it's like, there's something really beautiful about not having the attachment to like, oh, I'm just trying to plant food just for myself, but I want to provide something for everything. So if a bug eats something, it's not like, oh, there's a pest, I need to kill it. It changes your perspective. You know, in this monoculture cropping world, it's like, we, we got to plant all these lettuces in a row and we create like a buffet for pests and they come by to eat it and then we just wipe them out with chemicals and spray our food and stuff. Permaculture is more about working with the land. You know, so over time, there should be enough food for everybody but I'm still learning. So over here, which is not under the hackberry tree, we built another garden. This is also cover cropped. And what I did here instead was kind of based on hugel culture where you basically take like 
like lots of sticks and branches and logs and stuff and dig under here and you then you cover that with compost and soil and over time as the branches break down you have this amazing soil now it's really hard to dig under here because it's mostly rock um, so that was something someone told me um, that I was working with and he said when you dig you know if you can pull out rocks that area creates mass and open space to actually put in more soil and more organic matter so even though it's really rocky and hard the bigger rocks that i pulled out the more space that i then had um so there's different things growing in here actually put a this is a ground cherry which um i'm also trying not to grow too much that doesn't grow well around here so i'm really focused on perennials that either are very similar to the native ones um, that grow very well in these climates because I don't want to overwhelm the system but ground cherries grow all over the place so I got a ground cherry here um, and they're super cool this was probably the most exciting thing for me to see this is nettle um, stinging nettle one of the most nutritional amazing wonderful plants for allergies for all kinds of stuff and it's coveted by foragers and I planted like four plants last year they all died so I thought and then this one started coming back somehow literally it like died right away and then somehow it's still coming back, so that's amazing. That's a perennial wheat, Kernza. Um, so let's keep going on this little path here. Walk the path. And of course I should note, always barefoot. And it just also makes me feel more connected because I'm actually touching the ground. I am amazed, side note, how many people, and you know, no, no offense to people, but I'm amazed how many people run these trails, but it's like, it's like a novelty like you know you got shoes on you never actually touch the ground unless you fall on your face you never actually touch mother nature so like you're here and you're connected to it but you shut yourself off so being barefoot has also tuned me in to nature in a way that i could have never expected and i love gardening but then i also love hiking up these mountains and just not having shoes creates this really amazing connection so i'm not going to show you the whole path but I'll show you a few other things i planted that right there Yep, that my friends. Will you? See? Yep, there you go. That is a Nanking cherry, which is an amazing cherry to have. It's super prolific and really beautiful and delicious. That right there is my hops that's coming back, which is very exciting. That's going to basically vine up this tree, I hope, and will look beautiful. Um, there's a couple other things I have over here. Um, one being some raspberries and figs. Um, I don't want to say there's any mistakes in the garden, but one thing I did last year was I spread the garden out too much. So the truth is, if you look up here, it probably doesn't look like that much. You're probably just like, oh, it's just kind of random, you know, green stuff. But the deeper we get in, we start to notice things like this. Oh my God, that's dandelion. You can eat dandelion greens. Oh my God, this, this crazy badass looking plant, that's thistle. That's actually edible. You can braise those greens. There's this over here, that right there, that's Mahonia. The berries are amazing. You can make amazing tinctures out of it. This right here, this is a type of sage, Artemisia frigida. It smells amazing, extremely medicinal. So there are so many medicinal plants. There's wild currants growing everywhere. And especially in a more like mountainous, kind of desertous, territory it didn't seem like that to me and coming from the east coast i was honestly pretty disappointed it's like i was like oh i just missed that lushness but when i started really tuning in to the amazingness of this place it changed my perspective and i was like no there's medicine everywhere even these pine trees i i take the sap and i make sa salves out of it and they're just the like you just get to rub them on the delicious but you rub them on your skin and and you can you can taste the sap it smells incredible and the way sap works is that Whenever a tree limb breaks off, the tree excretes the sap to cover that so it can protect itself. So you don't want to take all that sap, but there's usually excess sap dripping down. And you collect that and you melt it down, say in beeswax, and maybe some shea butter, whatever you have, coconut oil. And I'll infuse that with pine needle oils and different things and make these amazing healing blends for your skin. So wherever you are, there's probably, and wherever you can get access to nature, there's probably more amazingness than you realize. And humans, we tend to try to spend so much time force growing everything. You know, I could try to change this whole mountainside, but no, this is beautiful. I want to work with it. And I'm still learning. I'm being patient because it takes time. So let's go down to our next garden. 